Hey everyone, it's me, Deborah J. I want to do a little video today about uh, detoxing. And I don't mean like detoxing food, although you can do that, but I mean more so like media detoxing, social media detoxing, and unplugging yourself from the your kind of external programmable um, reality. Okay. And the reason I'm talking about this is um social media it, there's actually a ted talk and i must put a link to it below but um there's a ted talk and there's a guy who basically talks about social media and talks about how it was actually the concept and how it was created social media was actually created on the concept of slot machines you know like the one-armed bandits that you see in the in the um amusement arcades and if you can imagine those uh, one-armed bandits, those slot machines are designed to hold your attention. They're designed to kind of like keep you searching for more, wanting the next thing. And it's very kind of quick fix, quick fix, quick fix, okay? So also when you're looking at social media and you're scrolling, you're constantly scrolling and you're scrolling up, 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 you know? Um, it's actually having an effect on your brain. Um, there's um, other healing modalities that use like eye training to be able to train different concepts and ideas into your mind. And when you consider the idea that it's to do with like moving your eyes into different positions, as you say, different kind of statements and that. Um, you can understand then why when we're looking at social media, we're constantly scrolling up, 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 up all the time. Our eyes are like flickering, you know, they're constantly flickering. Um, and we don't stay very long on one post. We don't stay very long on one article. It's kind of always off to the next article. And it has an effect on our brain. And the effect that it's having is it's lowering your attention span. It's lowering your ability to focus. Um, there's an excellent book by Johan Harry, who, um, who wrote uh, Lost Connections before. And it's all about, that was all about kind of like the reason meaning behind um, disconnection and depression. But he's also written a recent book called um, Stolen Focus, which is all about our attention spans and why we can't concentrate, what's stealing our focus, etc. And whilst um, a lot of it uh, so far, I've only read part of the book, but from what I've read so far, he's basically saying that, yes, yeah, social media is definitely a co contributing factor towards our attention span. But we've been um, our attention span has slowly been decreasing. Um, for the last couple of hundred years. And I suppose what we can take from that as well is, is that it's information overload. We live in a world where information is constantly available 24 seven, whatever we want, we can have it. And because our minds haven't, our brains haven't um, adapted to really cope with that influx of information, um, where you know our, our brains are still um not as quick as as the information that's coming into them basically and so we're being overloaded and overwhelmed with information and yet we're we're not being taught how to cope with that and we're now i suppose more than ever we're seeing people really really struggle with stress anxiety overwhelm um frustration irritation um everything stress the whole lot and I see it in my clinic constantly as a holistic therapist. I practice Reiki, reflexology, life path mentoring and coaching, life skills coaching, soul navigation and astrology. And my clients are constantly coming to me feeling they don't really know. A lot of them don't really know what's actually going on. They just know that they don't feel very well. They know that they don't feel so good. They feel overwhelmed, stressed out and anxious. But um, I suppose the way that I work as a therapist is, yes, um, come to me to help you come back into balance, replug back in and come back into alignment and get your energy back into a kind of a functional day-to-day uh, -day, um, um, functionality. And from there, then teach the skills to be able to cope with the ups and downs in life because we're not really taught how to cope with the ups and downs of life. I think it is absolutely shocking in this day and age that we're still um as humans we're not taught the most basic of skills when we're in school um you know learning history and geography and all these other subjects it's amazing and it's a fantastic thing to have however we need to be taught how to regulate our emotions as humans um you know animals if you look at, at nature and nature does this by itself if you are anyway confused about who you are as a human being and who you should be as a human being 
look to nature for the answers look at what is natural and what is out there for the answers and you'll find it very quickly um you know parent uh, birds and parent bears and parent lions and parent dogs like they you know they teach their young how to regulate um, there's another amazing video and it's about a polar bear it's um the body uh what is it there's a book called body keeps the score and in it they talk about body trauma and they refer to a youtube video about this guy who's hunting a polar bear and when he shoots the polar bear and um sedates it the the polar bear still kind of reacts and has this like as if it's still running so it's like knocked out unconscious but its body is physically reacting as though it's still running and what it's doing is it's completing the process it's completing the trauma process and in completing that trauma process it's getting to um release stagnant energy and stagnant motions and and uh, energy that's in its body um but as humans we're not taught how to do that and it's because you know, if there's nobody who knows how to do it, then how can anybody teach us, right? And we're at the stage where we've all, you know, we're all kind of seeking out coaches and gurus and spiritual teachers and the like to be able to teach us these things. But we need to get to a stage in society where we ourselves know the tools for practical day-to-day living so that we can pass them on to our children and so that they have the tools to be able to pass on to their children and so that we can return to nature the way nature is meant to be, that we have our inherited wisdom, our inner wisdom, that we're fully reconnected to ourselves, And when we know the natural tools that are available to us for free, um, then we can self-regulate and we can navigate the ups and downs of life with a lot more ease and flow. And really, I suppose what we're looking at is the need and necessity to be able to learn these tools ourselves so we can teach them to our children. We should be beyond the stage where we're having to seek out coaches and gurus and therapists and the like um, to the extent that we are. And I feel that now is the time that we need to take back our power and our control into our own hands to be able to self-regulate and to be able to navigate those ups and downs. So when I'm working with clients, yes, they come to me for Reiki, reflexology, astrology and coaching, etc. But really what I'm doing is helping them come back into balance, back into their bodies, reconnect back in with themselves. Um, I teach a lot of tools during my Reiki, reflexology and coaching sessions. Um, you know, people come to me on a week to week basis and they're getting tools and they're getting home practices to be able to implement into their own daily life. Um, I also run one-to-one and group work uh, coaching as well, which basically teaches you all these skills and abilities in in a much more condensed and intensive kind of way than we would if we're kind of doing healing work and doing that as well. Um, So one of the things that I actually do, why am I talking about all this, is one of the things that I do with almost all of my clients, depending on what they're with me for, is I get them to do a media detox for the bit for the length of time that they're with me. So media detox being that there is no social media. You're not, you know, reading newspapers, magazines, listening to the news, listening to the radio. You're not consuming, you know, box sets after box set after box set on um, Netflix or listening to podcasts um, to within an inch of your life. The idea of this is um, to unplug you from mainstream programming so that you can get to know yourself more clearly and authentically. When you actually unplug yourself from doing all of these things and you're left with nothing, it's natural human nature to want to replace what's missing. And if quite a large part of, of what's been taken up your concentration and focus has been social media, reading newspapers, listening to the news, watching TV and programs, etc., then when you remove all that, there's like a vacuum. So uh, what I do is I teach my clients to be able to become aware and watch what happens when you remove all of those things. Now you begin, you become more creative. You find ways of entertaining yourself. You find things that you used to love doing as a kid that you don't do anymore as adults and you start to do them. Now you bring back into more, you bring back in more joy and flow, connection, um, natural rhythms back into your life. Your sleep will improve, anxiety, depression, overwhelm will reduce. Um, your self-confidence will begin to go up. This is just from doing, this is just one tool that I teach with my clients. And even by this one simple tool, it is absolutely profound, the changes that I've seen with people. Um, And honestly, if this is the only thing that you do, I really, really highly recommend it. Years ago, when I went off traveling, I started with um, 
uh, working with ayahuasca in the jungles of the Amazon in Peru. And I was living with some of the shamans there for about a month or so. And in that time, I did a lot of ceremonies. And one of the things that we do before you work with ayahuasca, which is a master plant, is that you do a dieta and the dieta actually includes going off all these foods and sugars and, you know, processed food and whatever. But one of the things actually includes media. It, it means like you cut away from from everything. Now, if you're nervous and worried and your anxiety goes up because you're thinking like, well, how am I going to know what's happening in the world? And how will I know, you know, if there's something important that I need to know? I can categorically tell you as somebody who has um, not been plugged into the mainstream media world for, um, I mean, nine, twenty-one, two, but probably about six, seven years that you will hear what's going on in the world. Have no fear. You will hear because people will tell you. Um, but what's actually really lovely and interesting is you'll only hear what's important for you to know or um, what will actually more over a longer period of time, what begins to happen is you become aware of the heightened sensationalism of some of the news that you're being fed. And now you get to be more discerning about what feels real and what doesn't feel real. What is actually for your highest good and what is not for your good? What is placing you in fear and what is placing you in joy? And, and these are the benefits of doing this. Now, when I'm working with clients, they're usually with me for about eight weeks. Some of them come back for like a more intensive version of what we do because we're on a spiral, right? So we start here, we learn the stuff, we fall off the wagon, we come back into the spiral, more life happens. We learn again, we learn again, we get to reintegrate these tools. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely notice a huge difference for my clients, like from week one of, of doing this is huge. So that's all I wanted to say. Social media detoxing, media detoxing, pl unplugging yourself from the mainstream. Um, what I'm saying to you is unplug and get to learn um, to observe yourself, ob observe your reactions and your actions and get used to observing what is it that you do when you have no stimuli around you? How do you entertain yourself? How creative do you get about entertaining yourself? How do you spend your time? These are all things that you don't know about yourself unless you take away the thing that is taking up most of your time and it's stopping you from getting to know yourself and um, allowing you to uncover who you truly are, what it is that you truly like, what it is that actually motivates you and what your desires are. So I hope this, that you find this helpful. If you're interested in working with me um, for Reiki, reflexology, for astrology, life path coaching and mentoring, life skills mentoring, um, if you're interested in one of my eight week programs, either group work or one to one work, um, drop me an email at deborahjsoulnavigation at gmail.com. You can also check out my website, which is deborahjkelly.com. I'm all over YouTube. I'm all over Facebook and Instagram. Um, and yeah. Drop me a message and I'll talk to you then. Thanks. Take care. Bye.